Hello, and welcome to the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Today's guest, oh my God, somebody that I speak to four, five, ten times a day, somebody who is my great friend, my sister, Senior Director of Global Operations at EXP, Megan Kelly. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited. I've been listening to all the other ones. I'm honored to be a guest. Oh, you're so sweet. It's sort of like, you know how when you actually sort of do something where you think, oh my God, this person is ridiculously qualified to be a guest, but you don't think of that because you like speak to them so much. Yeah. It, no, I, it was so funny when you said that. I was like, oh yeah, that would be amazing. I'd love to be <laughs> on your show. Oh, yeah. well, I'm glad. This is going to be so fantastic. So you and I uh, worked at another company together for many, many years. I was there for 15 years. You were there for 18 years. But for the sake of the audience, can you just share with us how you actually got started in real estate? Yeah, it actually ended up a fluke. Um, I was- in Those are always the best ones. I know, it just fell into it. I, uh, I was with events and I started uh, at Company Ascendant in 2002. And then when they split, I ended up going over to Realogy and they were getting rid of the event department, but I had been working with Sotheby's Realty on events um, for them. And they were hiring for an operations manager and they asked me if I wanted to interview. And I have never looked back. It was fantastic. I got into operations and I love every second of it. I got to tell you, you are literally like born for this. I mean, there are so many moving parts. I know that your dad was a professional athlete. And so there is so much discipline that a lot of athletes have to go through. I'm wondering if you inherited that skill set, because I got to tell you, there's a lot that you do. So tell me a little bit about where your discipline comes from. Yes, um, you don't get into the NFL, you know, without committing yourself to the game. So yeah. I do think that I definitely learned a lot by watching my father growing up. I have two sisters, so he has three, three women. Um, and I was the one that went outside and threw the baseball around with him. He taught me how to play softball, that kind of thing. So I really had a lot of time to see, you know, his commitment to his craft. And I think I definitely got a lot of his ethics. So working, um, I forgot what I was saying, sorry about that. Um, so seeing him work and he actually, after he retired, he got, uh, he went into finance and he took a series seven. So wow. he committed to that. So there's a lot of things that I learned by watching him. You know, and that is not an easy exam. I came from finance. So the series seven and series 63, those are nightmares of, mm -hmm. you know, exams to sort of take. There's a lot of discipline there. And so, you know, you are really interesting because I've known you a really, really long time. And, you know, I feel so close to you. And it's really amazing how you look at something and are able to break things down. I mean, it's a skill set I don't have. So we work really well together. I sort of look at, you know, the, the, the macro picture. So I'm building the plane as we're flying it, but you're making sure that it lands safely. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a skill and a curse. It's my overthinking. <laughs> and you know, in my personal life, my friends make fun of me. And I'm like, but this is why I'm really good at my job, because I overthink everything. <laughs> and I think of every possible scenario that could happen. Um, exactly. And so, so tell me about international, right? Because that's what we sort of do. That's what we love. How did you get started with international? Because I know you started with Sotheby's and you and I worked there together on a lot of the international expansion, but was that how it actually started? Yes, it was. I, uh, wow. I was overseeing the U.S. team for transitions and bringing on new companies and I remember you were building out the team uh, in the different regions. And yeah. I was like, I would love to be a part of that. I think the first one we did was the Philippines and uh, got to help work with all of your new team members on training them on what we did in the US. So then after that, I mean, it was everywhere. It was Brazil, Panama, right. um, you know, St. Martin, wherever we needed to go, we went and did it. And, I just was fascinated by learning all the different ins and outs of what happens in international real estate and what happens in the individual markets and, you know, learning, you know, the licensing laws, you know, where some people, some countries you have to have four years of college 
to be able to be a real estate agent. In other countries, you don't need anything. That's right. So it's really you fun. Know, so it becomes this whole sort of like, that's a great point because it becomes like this whole wild west, right? In a lot of sort of ways, because there's no consistency. There's no MLS outside of the United States, mostly. There's probably yeah. like four countries outside of the US that have any sort of MLS. But for the most part, there isn't any. So there isn't any consolidation of information. To your point, some countries have licensing, some do not. And people would actually be really surprised as to the countries that don't, right? The United mm -hmm. Kingdom has no licensing. Everyone in London, London has the, the one of the most expensive types of real estate in the world. You don't need a license mm -hmm. to sell it. It's extraordinary, yeah. right? I did, blows so, my mind. I know, it's crazy. And so for someone who's trying to sort of get a hold of what this craziness is, what would be three pieces of advice that you would give an agent today saying, oh, I wanna break into global. What would be three pieces of advice that you would say to them, okay, this is what you should be looking at. This is what you should be sort of thinking about. So I think there's, um, you know, Three of the things I would say is you, you want to be humble because you need to, if you're going to look at going global and understand how each culture works, you need to listen to the people in that country and not try to do business as a U.S. person. Um, I think that is a very key lesson to learn. I know that we talk about it a lot, but it is, you know, the people in the country have the expertise, the people that you're working with. So that would be my second thing I would say is be inquisitive and go go meet people, learn all about that country's market. How do they do business typically? Is it an open market? Is it, you know, are the agents licensed? Like we said, um, understand the real estate law there and, you know, respect it. It's, it's a lot. And I would try not to take on too many countries at one time. I think it's best to focus on one, start learning yeah. about that country and really get to know it before you, um, you know, dive into, you don't want to dive into 10. It's like that saying you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Yeah. Um, that would be my other, my third piece would be be strategic about it and pick a country you like, you know, start with somewhere where you're really interested in and it'll drive you and help you move forward with it. You know, I actually like that. I actually love the idea of sort of like coming in, starting with humility and obviously understanding the culture because that's an important part of it extremely okay. important right and however you sort of deal with business there so let's sort of take this a step further let's say someone has selected three countries that they want to work with and try to build their business from so whether it's you know an exp model or just anyone sort of like looking at expanding their business what would you then so, uh, suggest how do they get started do they look for uh, other agents they can partner with? Do they look for the local sort of real estate association? How do they build that network? There's a lot of networks out there. Um, and one thing that I've seen a lot that people say that it has really helped them is if you're in the U.S., you know, having your SIPs, the Certified International Property Specialist, because you take this course, you learn a lot of ins and outs, and you're automatically in that network with like-minded people. So I think that that is a really good place to start. Um, you know, I know with like EXP, we have a global conversation group that we, uh, we facilitate. We have tons of people talking to each other in there, which is fantastic. And us. Yes, <laughs> and us. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, I just it's the networking. It, that's the, the biggest part. Find somebody who wants to be a mentor. We have, I, I, I know with us, Everybody wants to be a mentor. Everyone's so excited about global here. And you, I could tell you five people off the top of my head that would work with somebody that wants to start their global business. Yep. So I would say, just look around you, you know, join networks as much it's as you the, can. That's a great point. Cause you got to think about it on the other end. We're looking from a domestic point of view for an agent saying, you know, I want to break into whatever it is. I want to break into a country in Asia. I want to break into the UK. I want to break into Brazil. And so those people in Brazil, the UK, and Hong Kong want to have a relationship with somebody from the US as well, mm -hmm. because their buyers are also coming here. So that sense of reciprocity is something where you're talking about building that network and building relationships. 
that's going to have something where you're going to find a welcome ear on the other side of that conversation. Absolutely. I think people would be very surprised how willing everyone is to tell them all they know about their country and to bring them on in. So I wouldn't be shy. Exactly. And then, you know, there's other, there's other things that there's residency programs for real estate. There's 27 countries around the world that give you um, residency if you go buy real estate. You know, there's a golden visa That's program right. in yeah. Portugal. There's another visa program in Spain. There's many in the Caribbean, in Dominica, in Grenada, and other areas. So those things are actually really interesting also as a foothold to start those conversations. Yeah, and there, there's cool opportunities just like you're talking about there. If there is something going on in the U.S. that you ha are an expert on, you know, reach out to some brokers in, in different countries that you're interested in and just say, hey, I, I would love to talk to your agents about this. And I can tell you brokers are looking for things for, to provide their agents as part of a value prop and to have a successful U.S. agent speak to agents or even a uh, Hong Kong agent speak to yeah. uh, Portuguese agents. So it's, uh, you know, reach out. It, it, everybody in this business, we all know, is so um, family oriented. Everybody's just like a big family. So I would suggest that as well. The world is getting so smaller, right? It's sort of like everyone wants communication, understanding and everything else. And mm -hmm. so that really is just about building network. Yep. So tell me, Megan Kelly, What's the greatest lesson you've learned in your career thus far? Um, I would say, um, you know, I, I had a very good career um, and I'm very happy with everything I've learned. I've been very lucky to be with different companies, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, I would say I am the happiest I've ever been in my life right now because I made a decision to choose myself and to choose to work with somebody who has my same ethics, has my back, supports me, and I learn from. So I think that would be one of my biggest lessons is when you're working, if, if you're not in a good place, or if you're you know, looking for support and you're not getting it, there's probably time for a change. You know, just, it, it, I've, I can't even explain how happy I am at this company and working for you, Michael, and it's, you know, it was the best decision I made for myself. And I think that that's key. Find your people and find what you want to do. Life is too short to um, stay in a job uh, that you're, you know, kind of stagnating in. So I would just say take leaps. That was my biggest lesson was coming over Let's here. just say I couldn't agree with you more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm going to go back to what you do every day, which is sort of saving the world and saving my life, because I am someone who does big sort of like macro view, and then you're the one that sort of puts it all in place. How do you prioritize all these things? Because remember, in the last whatever it's been year, we have opened a country a month at average. Right. And so that doesn't mean for those that don't understand the EXP model that we we found somebody to buy a franchise and write a franchise check. EXP is not a franchise. So that means that we have to go in, start a corporation in the country that we're going into, find the infrastructure, get the banking, the finance, find a small team, find the person who's going to run it, find a team to go around them to help support this. And we've done this 12 times once every month. We've driven a lot of our other department heads absolutely insane because of the yes. speed at which we've done this. So how do you prioritize it? Uh, so um, at the end of the day, I, I really look at how is this going to affect our agent's business? Is this yeah. going to make a major impact or is this going to make a minor impact on a few people? Um, because we do have so much going on and that, like, you know, we, I would love to launch like 10 things tomorrow but obviously, A, you can't because we would overwhelm the people trying to learn 10 new systems or tools yeah. at one time. Um, so we have to phase things in. So when I look at those 10 things, I have to say, okay, this is going to get our agents more business or it's going to make their day easier. This is going to be a nice to have and we should have it. But you know what? Maybe we'll do that next year instead. So 
that's honestly my baseline is the agents and how we can help them. I love that because that's really why I think we've been successful, right? I think that's the reason that we've been able to do this. And really, from, from my point of view, it was really the idea of really wanting to have this aggressive schedule of opening these countries because it made a difference to many people, right? And so that to me was the, the overlying sort of focus of why we're doing this to your point, helping agents, but also helping the agents, families, their communities. You know, you know that um, uh, we've been talking about in recent speeches of the fact that this has turned into a movement, especially in the last year with yeah. so many people that we help thousands of people that then has that sort of um, X factor because it's their families, it's their communities. And so you sort of going into like, how did these, you know, 5,000 people or so outside of the US that are part of this family, did we then sort of impact, right? So it's really how we all motivate, but now you run the majority of the team that's part of global. So how do you motivate your team? So I'll tell, I can tell you a story. Um, yeah, I love a story. And you already know the story, but you don't know the side part of it. So when, I don't know if you remember, I can't remember if it was 50,000 agents or 45, but we were, we were looking to update a press release that was going out the next day. And I had reached out to our global operations coordinator because she helps us keep track of all of the, the agent counts. And it was like 10 p.m. on a Friday night. And she's sitting there just refreshing, refreshing the count, refreshing the count. And I was thanking her profusely because I hate to ask somebody to work like that at uh, 10 o'clock on a Friday. And, um, you know, obviously she was wonderful about it, but after it was done and we did hit the numbers and we turned them all in and everything, I said to her, I was like, so that number's going out in a press release that can affect our stock, which all of our agents own. That could help bring agents over and, you know, get our name out in the news more. And it was, you'd be out in the industry. So it was all of that coming from her hitting refresh on a Friday night and telling her the impact that she had, that she was like, wow. She's like, I, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. And so my point is, I really just try to motivate the team by helping them to understand their impact on what we're doing here. You know, cause it is huge. Every single person on our, in our group is amazing and they all have a huge impact every day. So that's one of my key things I really try to do and make sure that they a, get credit for everything they do. We are, we are, we are never I, that's we are a big ever, team, ever, never I. Ever, so. and, you know, and, 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 and you and I, you know, and by the way, the, the caveat to that story was that actually it was a Sunday night because we were going into, which is even worse, it was a Sunday night and we were going into pre-earnings report the next morning. And so the press release had to go out because it had to go out before market opened. And so we were all pretty, we had a pretty late night because we wanted to make sure that we had the best foot forward of what we were putting in there. And it was mm -hmm. such an amazing sort of collaborative effort because it was just that, right? So I'm calling you, you're calling her. And <laughs> sort of like, I got to get this to, got to get this updated to get to our CMO. And it was just that, that whole sort of thing that it wasn't about just getting, you know, something in, in a press release. It was about what you just said, the effect of what that would have done for 50,000 people, right? And their mm -hmm. lives and their sort of like journeys. And so when you put it in perspective in that manner, it does make it amazing. You know, like when I go to, to, to conferences, with um, with Glenn and with Jason, and now you'll start sort of traveling to them now that we're all fully vaccinated, um, to be able to see agents literally come up to these leaders and say, EXP changed my life, or EXP mm -hmm. saved my life because they were able to pay for an operation or you know be able to retire and have that financial freedom. That to me is something that is so moving emotionally because you can't put that on a PL. Yeah. Right. It's it's extraordinary. So speaking of P of EXP, 
how did you find EXP and how do you find EXP compared to, you know, where we came from or other, or other things in the industry, you know, just not naming anything in particular, but how do you actually see the positioning of what EXP does in the industry? Um, so I, I found EXP because, you know, in previous roles, I obviously was studying the competition. Um, so I had, um, I had heard a lot about EXP and I had heard a lot about the model. I think that EXP is so key in this business because of the model they give and the autonomy they give to the agents. It's all about the agents. It's the share, you know, the, the share, oh, sorry, stock awards, um, revenue share. Uh, the fact that you can just even walk into Jason Guessing or somebody's office in Worlds and say hi, and have a nice conversation. There's uh, so there's family. The 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 core values that they project and put out there are actually held to, and it's amazing. Um, I I just I see the agents. Um, the network that they have is phenomenal. Uh, we have this thing called Workplace through Facebook, and you can see agents talking to each other all day long. Um, so coming into EXP, you see people that are new and ask for help within a chat and within minutes, you know, 20 people have answered them. Um, so there's a community online. So it's, that's that, that cloud-based piece. Um, not only that, but also world and world. I yeah. think I do have to share, like I, I saw at a conference January, 2020, I saw Glenn on stage, he was presenting world. And I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. You know, and then just kind of went along my business. And when I came here and I started having meetings in world with people in Australia or people in Hong Kong, and I actually felt like I just had meetings with people. I, yes. you cannot describe, you have to experience it. Cause I, I honestly, it was completely different than I ever thought. And you don't know if you don't know, but once you're in there, it's a whole other world, literally. It, it, um, it's so true. It's so true. You know, and yeah. it's going back to that sense of family, right? How many times have we been in a meeting where everything is open door, right? And someone will stumble into our meeting and <laughs> everyone and everyone just stops because we want to help whoever it is. Like literally, we could be mm -hmm. in there with a dozen people. If somebody stumbles in because they're lost or what, and nine times out of 10, it's going to be an agent who is their first day and they're just lost and we'll stop and we'll take the time and go and direct them because that's what this is. Yep. You know, it's all about the agent. It and is. that is such a beautiful thing that it's that culture is everywhere. Mm -hmm. That sense of family is everywhere. If someone like, needs help, you stop. Mm -hmm. And like, it, you know, you're the only person from the entire company I've met in person because of our previous, <laughs> and I feel like half of the people I've been working with since August are like, you know, I know them better than people I sat next to in my previous job. Like, Isn't just, that crazy? It's, it's so funny. I, I, I absolutely love it. I mean, you all sent me, a, a, I moved and so they sent me a housewarming gift and I swear I've never met these people, but the gifts were spot on. It was like, they just knew me and got me because of all this time we've spent together. So it's just, it is such a cool environment. I absolutely love it here. In so many ways, because of the fact that we are virtual, we spend much more time together, mm -hmm. right? It's sort of like, because you and I start our day, there's it, usually at six, 6.30, depending, because we're traveling and we're in, traveling, we're in every time zone, <laughs> we're traveling virtually, we're in every time zone. So mm -hmm. we start with, we usually start with Asia and end with Asia. Uh, but it is one of those things that it's not rare for us to have a 12, 13, 14 hour day because it's, uh, it's the time zones we're hitting, um, but we're building something and it's, it's the sense of getting motivated. And, you know, if we were in an office environment, we wouldn't be in an office for 14 hours. Yeah. And that's, and, you know, to that point, like with the family piece too, like I just had a meeting today. I had a meeting yesterday. I have several scheduled next week with different agents within EXP who are, they, they know people in different countries. They're excited to help us grow. They, you know, so we get on phone calls with these people and, and learn about who they know, what is the 
connection in a certain country? How can we help them grow their business and recruit agents there if we're open? If we're not yet, where should we be going? The the agent involvement with what we're doing on a day-to-day basis is like unparalleled. I've never seen anything like it. It's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that idea that this is an agent-centric brand, it's so true. Mm -hmm. We have 50,000 plus agents that are ambassadors of our global efforts. And the majority of them are the ones that are bringing a lot of this organic growth into all of these countries we're entering. It's amazing. Yep. I love it. You know, I call myself the smartest man at EXP. (laughs) Because 90% of my team are women and uh, led and run by you. And it is something that, um, you know, to me, it's, uh, it's, it's just, oh, it's such easier to say women are smarter. And so, you know, you actually have a skill set that just, in my opinion, men don't possess, right? So you're, 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 you know how to sort of like lead incredibly well. And so I'm just really curious as to your point of view within this organization, especially, you know, we have uh, um, a president domestically, that's a woman, obviously, we have a lot of women in leadership roles at EXP. How do you sort of see the opportunity within uh, this organization for women and advancement? Oh, I think it's amazing. I mean, I think over, you know, like we said, I've been in this business 18 years now. And over the past 18 years, I've slowly seen everywhere um, women becoming more uh, vocal and being in more leadership roles. Um, because, you know, most agents, not most, but there's a large portion of uh, real estate agents that are women, but the number of them in leadership positions was not, yeah. you know, uh, it, it wasn't, yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, I've seen that changing a lot and which is wonderful. And I, you know, looking at EXP, we have, you know, some wonderful women in leadership. I mean, it's a very um, diverse leadership board and I feel very confident to go and talk to any of the women in our company and to have a conversation and talk to them about how the, you know, how did you get to where you were and, and, you know, and being a mentor for people. So we have, um, we've got a lot of opportunity for growth for women within EXP. And I think diversity in general, right? It's sort of like, you know, um, as a Latino man within my position, right? And, you know, you sort of see the the different organizations that uh, we have at EXP for advancements of different diversity groups. And I think it's really beautiful that that's something that is not only um, uh, celebrated, but really exalted within our organization. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, with the the Pride group, um, just all of them, I I remember when I first started, I had a conversation with somebody because I was just curious because, you know, I'm a big ally and I just wanted to know, like, how was it in this within the company? Because, you know, you never know. And I've had several people, they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best company to work for. Everybody is so accepting. It's such an open environment, um, you know, and with the diversity council and we had a person specifically assigned to, for inclusion and diversity. So, I mean, it's, they, they really live up to that value of the core values as well. It's just been, um, I don't, I don't feel like anybody in this company is marginalized in any way. Yeah, I agree. And I love that. I love that. And so I have one final question for you. And I ask this for many of my guests and some of them cringe at the question, but it's always fun to ask. So (laughs) your book of life, Megan, what's this chapter called? So I I learned a new word recently um, and somebody said it and I had to ask them to repeat it. um, And I I fell in love with it. Um, It's an ancient Greek word called kairos. And the meaning is it's this, the right critical or opportune moment. And it's that this specific moment in time where everything is aligned and there's a perfect time for action. So I feel like this chapter starting at EXP in August and just coming in and running with it. I feel like that's, that's where I'm at with, in my life right now. This is the perfect moment for me. I love that answer. And I actually celebrate that answer because it is, it's the perfect moment for me that you're here because this couldn't be done without you. 
I adore you. You are such an incredible human being. You're an incredible businesswoman. You are an incredible friend and a family to me. And I've known you such a long time. And I really appreciate everything that you do. And I appreciated your time today. No, well, thank you. I mean, like I said before, I my lesson was to choose who I want to be around. And I chose to be around you because I, I know who you are and I, I've not looked back. I am so happy. This is such a ride. It's so much fun. And, I and we're just you. starting. Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Megan. And thank you all of you for listening. This has been the Global Luxury Real Estate Mastermind with me, your host, Michael Valdez. Mm -hmm.